So um, I tried to uh, discover my network server, which was not possible. And what I tried to do is I tried to restart uh, all of the servers that are part of this video. And what I managed to achieve is my domain controller became managed and unblocked. So now all the group policy settings are applied on this uh, server. But if you are experiencing problems with um, adding your uh, uh, domain controller to be managed and unblocked, what you can do is you can go and edit and deselect the uh, DNS server, click OK, and it will automatically become managed and unblock. And then you need to just edit once again and just add the DNS server. Once again, click OK and you should be with uh, green, everything green and the access should be unblocked. So as I'm not able to automatically add the network server, what I can do is I'm going to show you, I can manually add the server and what I need to specify is the FQDN, which is NLB Network 01. Click verify. It's going to find the IP address of the server and I'm going to select the DNS um, as a DNS row installed on the server. So I'm going to leave unspecified. So if I click OK, you will see that I've manually added my network server as part of the managed server. So if you, for some reason you're not able to find, usually they should be all listed in here automatically after a discovery. But if you're not able to find them, you can manually add the server that you want to manage. So I'm going to edit this server and I'm going to click on managed and click OK. And this is the message that uh, you will most probably see a lot using IPAM. And uh, this is a thing that uh, is addressed all over um, the internet that uh, the IPAM or the server is not allowing the IPAM server to inventory and work with. But uh, what you can do is um, you can go ahead and uh, try to make sure that the group policy settings are applied on the server. You can even try to restart the server that you're trying to monitor or maybe change the status to unmanaged. Click yes. And you can see that the IPAM access is still blocked. Let's try to make it managed again. Yep, it's not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure and I'm going to show you, I'm going to run a CMD or command prompt as administrator. Yes. And I'm going to run GP update with the force switch. This will um, allow me and this will uh, tell the server to re-download every single group policy that uh, uh, is applying uh, under the domain and for this server. So after I have this one, I'm going to restart the server and we'll check once again within IPAM if the status is still blocked. So after a restart, what I did is um, the, the access was still blocked. I tried to right click and refresh the server access status, which again led me to the block status. So in the end, I did the same trick with this server as well. I edit the server. I tick the tick box for the DHCP server, which basically I don't have a DHCP server on this one and remove the DNS. Click OK. Then edit the server once again, remove the DHCP, enable the DNS, click OK. And you can see that the access is currently unblocked. It's a strange way for you to make things work in IPAM. But nevertheless, as things are working, um, I should be okay now to show you what you can do using the IPAM and what are the different uh, uh, views that you, you have on your uh, DHCP and DNS servers. So let's uh, continue with um, looking through the different options that you have and what you can basically configure and achieve in here. So um, the first one is the address space in here. There is 
information description of what you can do within the IPAM so if you want to have more information Microsoft made sure that everything is pretty much um, detailed and described so you can read through and uh, get familiar with uh, the IPAM and what you can do so the first one is the IP address blocks and you can see that at the moment I have different networks uh, that are working under my DHCP on my domain controller. And these networks you can manage if you want and you can right click on the different networks, you can edit the IP address range, you can associate a DNS reverse lookup zone or uh, configure basically everything that you want to uh, to achieve on a normal DNS ser on a normal DHCP server I'm sorry so if I click on edit you can see I have uh, different option that options that I can do um, I can configure basically the the scope the way I want it to be from a centralized location instead of going on every single server and doing it um, there or using the DHCP to connect to the different servers DHCP MMC so the IP address inventory at the moment it is empty um, the IP address range groups again I have the DHCP managed service and um, I'm going to speak about a little in the end about the access scope because this is a new thing that uh, Microsoft have implemented uh, with uh, IPAM and it is called uh, the IPAM road based access uh, control. So um, what you can do is you can provide access to IPAM both from security groups that are local and on, on a domain level and now you can configure role-based uh, um, access so if you scroll down in here you'll see that I have another tab which are, we are going to speak about so um, I have the option to create virtualized networks so if you have any virtualization networks they will be listed in here I don't have so monitor and manage again information about what you can manage what you can monitor and this is the um, the basic information about the DNS and DHCP servers that are being managed by the IPAM server. You can see um, the DHCP service uh, is running on my um, DC01. The DNS service is running. If I right click, I can create DNS zone. I can create a conditional forwarder. I can uh, set access scope if I want to. At the moment, um, it's currently under a single scope which is the global scope and this is the default and you can inherit access from a parent so I will speak about access scopes uh, later so DHCP scopes on the other hand you can see um, I've created several test scopes that um, we can check together they are uh, running at the moment so if I right click I can edit I can create a, a reservation I can create a super scope I can um, do a failover DHCP failover or uh, add a DHCP policy I can deactivate the scope if I want to uh, or even delete the scope if I have the proper permissions uh, about DNS zones uh, you can see I have the NLB lab zone and uh, the nlbsolutions.com zone which is hosted on my network server and there is no data but um, if I leave it f for it to think about it it will find information and I'll be able to manage this DNS scope as well so from here I can add a resource record so if I right click on here just to make it work I can add a resource record and adding a, a resource record is a bit tricky because you need to click around the uh, wizard but I'm going to add a an A record which is going to be IPAM works okay and the IP address for this will be um, 10.0.0 .0 .0 let's say 124 and this is a non-used address but I just want to add this uh, into um, my DNS zone so I'm going to add the resource record and then uh, what you can do is you can uh, go to the summary if you want nothing here but I can click apply and it will connect to my DNS server on my domain controller and it will succeed to add the DNS resource record so I'm going to click OK 
And just to verify, I'm going to switch to my domain controller, open the DNS, expand the forward lookup zones and NLB lab, and you can see the record on the top. IPAM works. So it has access to uh, my DNS server, it's working properly. So from here, uh, you can do a lot of things. You can uh, edit DNS zone, delete. Um, basically, you can administer and manage the DNS server the way you can do it locally on the server. So the next window is the server groups here. Again, you will see information and um, I'm skipping a bit, but on the bottom, you'll be able to find details view in here. You will be able to find different uh, things, even event uh, logs saying what was changed by whom, what did something. So you can see that uh, I have detailed information about the scope and um, where exactly is the database path, if we ha I have a backup. And uh, again, you can do pretty much everything from here. And you can even, um, let me just um, see, you can launch an MMC. So um, I can launch the normal DHCP MMC and I can open the scope from here as well. So I'm going to close this for now. Um, the event catalog uh, contains events, like I said, uh, where you can monitor the, uh, monitor the access on the IPAM server. So you can see what has been configured uh, by whom in here. So you can have um, detailed information, detailed audit, if something, for example, deleted a record, if something uh, created a new scope and uh, they shouldn't have. So from here, you can have uh, different detailed information um, to, to um, consider. And the bottom is the access control. And uh, I said uh, that this is a thing that Microsoft are really keen on at the moment and they are um, bringing a lot of questions on the exam. So I haven't spoken about exams, maybe in the future I will create a short video explaining what is important and now I'm saying this is important for you to understand uh, to succeed on the exam if you plan to take it. So there are built-in uh, role-based um, um, groups that you can uh, open and add people in them. Um, at the moment, you are not able to edit the building, of course, but um, if you go to the access scopes and access policies, these are the two things that you need to be familiar with as well. So you have the global access scope, which is the default scope. Uh, you are not able to delete it or do anything uh, with it, but what you can do is if you right click on the access scope, you can add an access scope. And the new access scope, for example, uh, let's say office one, because I want to, you can add the description. I want to add an access scope for office one, where I will have different administrators working with, um, with uh, IPAM, for example, and I can give them permissions. So if I configure this access scope, I can go ahead and go to, for example, my network server and set the access scope, remove the tick box to inherit the scope from the parent and set the office scope. So from now, if I set permissions to the office scope, where we are going to do that next. So if I access, uh, go to access policies, right click and add an access policy. So for example, I'm going to add user one. I'm not able to find it because I need to change the location. Okay, user one. And I can new, create new. So I want, for example, user one to be able to, um, to be a DTP res reservation administrator only. And I'm going to set the office one as a scope for the for user one. So I'm going to add the settings. And now you can see that I'm configuring an access policy for user one to be able to configure reservations under the access scope of office one only. So I'm going to apply. Okay, and click OK. And you can see that now 
user1 has permissions to go ahead, open the IMPAM server and create a reservation, for example in here, to create a DHCP reservation for a specific printer, for example, or a specific workstation that is important to other users to have a reservation. So this is important, the access control is important for you to know. You can even configure a user role that is going to be a custom user. So I'm going to say Office 1 because I know that uh, the users in there will not only need reservations, but they will need to configure or, for example, to create... Let me see where it is. It should be somewhere in here. IP address operations. No, maybe DTP. Create scope, edit scope. I think I should be able to find even more granular uh, operation like create an IP address, for example. So I want the users to be, a to be able to create an IP address. And you can see that uh, I've created this and I can go ahead and give the user one, if I edit the access policy and edit in here, I can go ahead and assign user one with the custom update setting. Don't forget to click update. It's uh, strange, but if you go ahead and change the settings and click only apply, it will not apply. So um, update the settings first and then click apply. So user one can only create IP addresses um, right now. And this is the small overview of the access control, the, the role-based access control in IPAM. And don't forget, uh, work with it so you can get familiar, you can um, get to know how things work and how things are done using the role-based access control. That way you will be able to succeed on your exam. So um, this is the overview of IPAM or IP address management in Windows Server 2016. If you like the video, you can always hit the thumbs button, thumbs up button. If you don't like the video, hit the thumb, the dislike button and uh, leave a comment to say what can be improved in the future. Of course, if you have any questions, as you already know, uh, me or someone from the community will try to help you because that's what I want to build, a community that uh, is able to help each other and succeed in IT and uh, develop IT skills and be professional as well. This was Nick from NLB Solutions. Thank you very much for viewing and see you in the next video.